So good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Glele Aro. I'm the coordinator of the Public Health Emergency, Emergency Center uh, in Benin. But I'll do my presentation in French. So I want to give you a brief view of Benin and the health organization there. Also, the epidemiological situation of cholera, the national strategy to control and prevent cholera, our main achievements and key success factors. And then we will talk a bit about the challenges and the outlook for the future and the priorities. Here, this is just to show you where Bina is located between Nigeria and Togo in the north. We have Burkina Faso and Niger. And we also have a coastal area. We have 12 departments with 77 municipalities. Our population was 13 million and the capital is Porto Novo. Our health system is built in a pyramid. At the national level, we have hospitals under the umbrella of the Ministry of Health seven of these hospitals and we are currently building a building a large university hospital which will also be it will bring together all uh, types of services and will be extremely modern then we have 12 departments that have 12 what we call departmental directions and six departmental hospitals and then in at the peripheral level we have 43 hospitals in our 34 health zones now to tell you a bit about the situation of cholera in Benin. It's not yet an urgency, an emergency as it is in other countries. But if you look at this curve, this epidemiological curve, you will see that it's in weeks 49, 50, 51 that we had peaks in the number of cases. So in total, between 2021 and 2022, we had about 1,784 cases that were recorded, including 55 confirmed cases, 55 confirmed cases. So here we have a problem with confirmation. And so the last, epidemic that we had, the last outbreak was limited to certain zones in Cotonou, Abome Kalavi, Kome, Jugu, Paraku, and Karimama. So in 2021, we developed a plan to eliminate cholera with the support from WHO and certain other WHO partners. So we were able to identify the hotspots and we identified 15. There were 13 and we added two additional hotspots. I won't list them, but they are here on the map. We adopted a strategy oriented towards the pillars to try and win the fight against cholera. So obviously for monitoring and laboratory activities, we have the existence of case definitions. We have rapid intervention teams that are functional and who have been trained. We have immediate case notification systems. The actors in the emergency response team have been trained and we focus a lot on reinforcing community relays who help us, who inform us if the situation is serious. We have a central and departmental search for possible pathogens. And when COVID arrived, we were already able to reinforce our laboratory systems in the different departments. Now for case management, uh, the government has uh, proclaimed that care would be free. All 
all care is free. And for each event, if there's a, a flood or another event, we reinforce the capacities of our actors. The protocols, the case protocols are available. And we've built three CTEs, treatment centers. We also have the possibility to set up cholera treatment units. Now for vaccination, last year with Gabby, we sent in a request when we had our cholera cases, but unfortunately we didn't receive the resources fast enough from Gabby, but we are available to revise that request if necessary. In terms of political will, we have the will to vaccinate the population. In terms of coordination, we have our center, P-H-E-O-C, and it's operational to coordinate the response actions. Now for WASH, this is where we have a lot more problems. We have a national quality agency that controls water quality, and we have projects for sanitation. So that secondary municipalities will be served better. We have Aquatab distribution as well. And we're focusing a lot now on public latrines that will be available in some uh, localities. Now, in terms of risk communication and community engagement, we have contracts with radios for awareness programs, etc. Now, in terms of our achievements, in the start of each year, with our national budget, we have been pre-positioning supplies for cholera management throughout the country, especially in the hotspots. We have capacity building for all of the actors in all the pillars of the fight against cholera. The case management actors, et cetera. There has also been another achievement was the elaboration and submission of the National Cholera Elimination Plan to the GTFCC panel. And recently we've developed our national multi-risk health emergency response operation plan to facilitate multi-sector coordination. Now in terms of challenges, we have some major challenges. We have an insufficiency uh, of the water agencies to meet all demands and serve everyone. So the government has made a lot of efforts to have more drinking water in rural areas. And because we don't have enough public latrines, we need to continue in training relays in certain areas also. Now, we don't have enough oral vaccines as well. There's also the inexistence of a physical framework to strengthen response, response coordination. Now for our priorities for 2023, 2024, we need to implement community surveillance with the new community health policy that's just been launched. We, we want to validate and then publish the National Cholera Elimination Plan. Another priority is the organization of regular annual multi-sectoral meetings on cholera epidemic management, the organization of simulation exercises in cholera hotspots that have been identified, and regular virtual meetings with our neighboring countries on the fight against cholera. 
we are also building and equipping the Public Health Emergency Operations Center. Thank you. I think I went through this very fast. We are not a country that is highly impacted by cholera yet, but I wanted to give you just this overview.